Good morning everyone and welcome to my craft room. My name is Julianne Richards and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Um, thanks for joining me today and thank you to everyone who purchased my November fun fold class. Um, this particular video is the tutorial video for the three cards you've purchased in uh, this month. Uh, hopefully you like them and you'll give them a bit of a go going forward. Um, keep in mind that all the products you're using in these kits are current products and um, available from my online store if you absolutely fall in love with them. Anyway, so I'll go through what it, all the products are as we make the cards. Um, but while I've got you as a captive audience, I might go through the start with savings um, special offer that we've got going on at the moment. I don't. I know I don't usually put advertising at the beginning of my videos, but this is just a um, an offer that's too good to to not mention um, for the month of November 2021. Um, so basically, when you join Stamping Up during November, you join my little team. You can join as uh, if you want to grow a business or you can join as a hobbyist there's no compulsion to have classes or sell or do anything other than you know enjoy the products for your own um, your own benefit when you um, purchase this, uh, the starter kits in November the um, it will only cost you $130 this is Australian dollars so that's a savings a saving on top of the normal price of 169 so that's a saving of $39 on the normal price and for that you get two $135 worth of product of your choice. So there's no dictating to you what you have to put in a starter kit. You can choose whatever you want um, and get uh, $235 worth for um, $130. And that includes free delivery. So that's even a better saving on top of that. You're probably saving another six to ten dollars on delivery as well so if you're interested in that one um, just contact me send me a message through facebook or send me a um, email um, there's an email listed on my um, youtube channel as well so yeah okay so that's valid that's valid through to the 30th of november for australian residents okay so let's get on with our um, card class tutorial so we've got three cards to this month We've got um, these little three or cards or projects because this last one's not a card, it's a calendar. So we've got a gift card holder here, which is in the lovely whimsical whimsical trees, uh, whimsy and wonder, wonder bundle. So we've got that one there, which is really good. It's a nice little gift card holder. We've got a um, twisting triangle easel card or corner fold easel card there that's using the poinsettias. Probably the last time I whipped the poinsettias out this year, because uh, yes, I think I've probably done those to uh, to to death just about. Uh, and we've got um, a sweet little calendar, which is like a desk calendar, just sit up on the desk like that, with a little calendar tab there. Yours will be for 2022, of course, and that uses the um, the the uh, uh, beautiful wings dies and the um, the uh, what's it called. The beautiful paper is called, I've got to remind myself, the um, artistically inked. No, no, that's not that one. Uh, I've got to remind myself, isn't that terrible? The hand penned, we are, had to look at the paper, the hand penned designer series paper. It's this beautiful back one here. So that's a really just sweet little thing. I've given you an envelope for that so you could give it to a teacher or a, a friend or a colleague or something if you wanted to do that or just keep it for yourself. Okay, so let's get started. We might do our calendar first. Okay, so here's your what your kit will look like. Um, hopefully it looks something like that. Pop that over to the side. I, I like to, I pick a random one for myself so I know that if I've missed something, I've I'm, I'm sort of got a good chance of, um, of uh, discovering what I've missed. So be careful because we've got some little um, rhinestones there that could fall out. You've got your little butterfly who's a cutie. That's in the designer series paper as well sentiment box obviously a backing here which fits behind your calendar uh, and some sort of cardstock and the D designer series paper as well so there's not really much to this one it's beautiful but it's um pretty pretty simple so what you've got here is a 11 and a half by four and an eighth piece of cardstock it's been scored at four and a half at nine 10 11 and then you've got your little tab to um just to glue at the end there so this little bit here with the folds actually forms your, the base so you basically just concertina that up so it goes up and down there with like a little triangle add some glue to this tag here and then um, bring the 
bring the top flap over and that creates your little card. So just bring that over, you folded that up, bring that over and just hold it for a little while just because it's going to bounce back up again. Just hold it until the glue or you can use snail of course or double sided tape, whatever your preferred adhesive is. So that's there. So that's basically what you've got there, sort of like an arrow shape. Okay, so choose which side you want the front to be. I don't think it matters too much. See how it stands. If one side lends itself to be the front or not, we might go for that one there. So basically now it's just a matter of layering it up. So experiment a little bit with your paper and cardstock because obviously there's going to be a right way and a wrong way because the card is slightly higher than it is um, wide, taller than it is wide and so are all the pieces of paper. So just glue the, now this colour, oh the colour of the card base is um, Highland Heather if you like that one and it's going to be contrasted with this beautiful um, so saffron there that's that beautiful soft yellow is our favorite so saffron there we are so that's the one first layer there so bring in our designer series paper next okay pop that on this side uh, um, this designer hand pen designer series paper has a, a an orientation. It's you know it got up and down, so you'll follow the direction of your your flowers. Obviously, don't have them, um, you know, going up the wrong way, sitting on their heads. Um, and again, be careful. You've got the orient the, the 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 positioning right because it's longer than it is wide. Okay, so what we're going to do then is add our little calendar. So pop. The, a bit of glue or double-sided tape on the back tab so that this is your December tab on the back here so when you get to December it's going to be just a single sheet on its own left there pop it into the little um, mat of uh, of so saffron here we are and then we just need to position that on the little um, easel that we've made so what I'm going to do is not glue it straight away. I'm just going to position it with my um, sentiment box and my just position them first so I know I'm not going too far up or too far down. So I'm going to pop the little sentiment box on the right-hand side and the, just the little butterfly next to it there. It's going to overlap it a tiny bit, so we'll just let that happen. So don't go too far off the edge. If you want to put it into, a, into the envelope, don't go too far off the edge. If you're just having it sitting on the bench, you can... Um, go as far over as you want because you're obviously not going to fit it in an envelope or need to. So I think if I position everything like that, I think we're about right. So I'll just pop some glue on the back of the calendar. Put that on there. Centre and straight if I can. Ooh, didn't move a bit then. Okay, so here we are. So I might actually stamp my sentiment now. So what I'm going to use, and um, you can use whatever you want or substitute in another sentiment box if this one doesn't work for you. I'm going to use the little things you do make such a big difference. So this is from the Pansy Patch um, stamp set. Now a calendar, I suppose you have to be a little bit, a little bit discerning about what um, sentiment you actually use because um, it's something that someone's going to be looking at all year round, something that's a little bit, you know, happy birthday or something might not be as relevant because it's not going to be their birthday all year round um, or, uh, you know, you know what I mean, something that's a little bit inspiring like this one, something about being friends or something like that's probably a little bit more appropriate. But as I say, this one's entirely up to you. It's your kit. You can do what you like. I'm just going to pop that one on there. It's a bit of a tight squeeze in this little box. So you might have to check that your sentiment actually fits before you go to get too carried away. There we go. That's not too bad. Okay, so then I'm going to pop the sentiment box in. I haven't used any dimensionals or anything in this one. Um, you could pop the the um, sentiment or the butterfly on dimensionals if you wanted to or foam squares. But um, I've just let this one, we've done this one with glue. 
just going to pop that on there. Okay. Now with our little butterfly, I'll give him a little bit of a fold. So he's got a little bit of naturalness around him. Bits might fall out. So all I do with my little butterflies is put some glue on their central body there on his thorax and then pop him on the card. So I don't want him to overlap our sentiment too much, but I don't want also don't want him to overlap the edge of the card too much as well. So there we are. We'll put him there. Okay, we're getting through this one really quickly. The other two are a little bit more complicated than this. Okay, so you've got three little um, rhinestones and I'm just going to pop, you can pop them wherever you want of course, but I'm going to pop them just along the length of his little body there. There we are, just to give him some, some fl fluttery bling. Okay, so as I said, that's a pretty easy one, that one, that one's done already. So there you are, you have your little, your little, um, little stand-up calendar, as I say, perfect for to give to somebody as a gift or a, a Christmas present or something, Secret Santa or anything like that. But as I say, perfect as well just to keep near the phone um, at home as well. Okay, so that's card number one, record time, or project number one, I suppose we'd call it. Okay, second project, I might pop those away just in that little bag, just to keep them safe. Let's get rid of my clean off that stamp. And pop that away. Okay, so for the second card we might do, if you're also doing my um, Christmas season um, class for November, you've got a, a very similar gift card holder to do for that one. It uses the, obviously uses the Christmas uh, Christmas seasons um, bundle. Be careful again, because there's a fair few bits and bobs in this one as well that's gonna fall out. So you've got some rhinestones, some little die cut trees, little bits that fall out of the trees, sentiment box, and various other bits and bobs as well. Okay, so here's the final version here. So what we're aiming for is something that looks a little bit like that. Okay, so what you've got is, and don't be disturbed if there's a hole out of your piece of cardstock, that's perfectly um, on purpose. You've got a sort of a backing, a card base, I suppose you'd call it, but it's just a single piece of cardstock. Then you've got a piece of the designer series paper. This is the Whimsy and Wonder designer series paper or whimsical whimsical designer series paper. It's beautiful. It comes with the with the collection. It's got some lovely silver um, embell um, silver embellishing, lots of lovely gifts. And the other books, one other has baubles as well, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, don't worry about that little cutout bit there. I'm just trying to make the most of my card stock so I don't waste it and, and I'd use that little um, cut out as a on a different project so but I thought for the sake of this it doesn't really matter too much because you guys won't have that in yours and it doesn't really make much difference for my example okay so what you need to do is get the the, the bit that's got the hole cut out of it and just put it straight onto the card base that you've been given or the, the, the um the triangle, the rectangle of. Now this colour is polished pink, so it's one of our new in colours for 2021-23. So you'll have a slightly larger than normal bound, um, border around the edge. It should be like, a, I think it's an eighth of an inch all round or a quarter of an inch smaller all in total. But there you are, so don't take any notes of that. That's what yours will look like there without my finger. Okay. Okay, so then what we do, we might pop that aside for a second. We'll start working on the gift card part. So lots and lots of pieces of cardstock. This was um, a lot of cutting here. So I've got a piece of, again, the polished pink cardstock, and it is, I think, eight and a quarter long and three, uh, three and seven eighths wide. And it's been scored at two and three quarters from either end. So 
two and three quarters from this end and two and three quarters from that end. And when you do that, they fold up perfectly like that. Okay, and this is going to be our gift gift card holder. So it's going to sit on the front of your card, sort of glued, that central panel glued to the card. Okay, and we're going to sort of decorate around it. Okay, so we'll do the, it's going to fold over like that. So this is going to be the top. So we might do the top first. So for the, the top or the front, front facing panel, you've got a, get rid of that. So once you've worked out what the top is, you've got a panel of um, mint macaron and that's been run through the, um, the snowflakes embossing folder from this year. So it's a really cute little embossing folder there. It comes in the smaller size, so it comes in a pair. So it comes uh, in a pair with the, um, the pine needles one that um, you've probably seen me use on a number of cards, but um, they're a lovely combo. Um, for Christmas time and um, yeah will be quite good um, all through the year especially the pine needles one I think I'll use that quite a lot I love that sort of the look of that that sort of earthy look so you're just going to pop your panel of mint macaron on top just like that and then what we're going to do is bring in our sentiment box which is here so this is from the seasonal labels die set this one here I use it a lot it's a really handy little size so we're going to pop that on the front of our card over to the bottom right hand side so we might stamp that first so i've used the stamp set straight from the whimsical trees stamp set because it goes perfectly with the design that i've made since i've used the designer series paper there's a cute one here that says may the love of the season warm your home and fill your heart so i'll put that so i'm going to use a darker pink than the polished pink. I thought I'd used the polished pink, but I think I've used magenta madness, which is which is darker than the pink, the polished pink, just to make that sentiment pop out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp that. As I said, up to you guys. You can use whatever sentiment you like, but um, I suggest that with the design, you pop your sentiment. If you've got a very large one, if you pop it over towards the right hand side a wee bit it'll fit better with the design. There we are. <laughs> very, very crooked. That's all right. I'd flip it over, but that's okay. The trouble is with the camera, you can't get quite over the top of things rather than take them out of shot completely. So, so I'm going to glue that just straight on the top of where I want it to be on the card base, on the book card. Um, Oh gosh, my words are leaving me today. Not a good day for videos with your words leaving you. Straight onto the gift card, just like that. Okay, so then you should also have in your little kit, you have um, three die cut Christmas trees. And these are from the Whimsical Trees um, Christmas tree die set as well that comes with the whole suite. So you've got a tall skinny one in a pink, in the um, polished pink. You've got a shorter squatter one in the um, magenta matte. Uh, mint macaron and you've got this one is in blushing bride so obviously that is a wee bit tall so it's definitely way too tall for the the design that we've got so the good thing with this one is if you just take your scissors you can cut now what have i left one two three you can just cut the bottom um sort of leaves off so just snip it in two places so there on that side and that'll detach it from the left hand side try and make it sort of follow the the pattern so it doesn't look like you've just taken a chainsaw to the tree um, you can sort of round it off a little bit so it looks sort of natural ending so it just makes it shorter so that you can pretty much um, attach it to the card now the thing is you can't have it at all overlapping the top because if you think about it your person's going to open it's going to be on the it's probably the way to show you it's going to be on there they're going to get their present they're going to open it up and go oh and then it's, it's if its little top is overlapping at all it's going to get crushed when it opens up at the right angle like that so bring it in and make sure it tucks just under that it may overlap the bottom a bit but that's that's just nice that, that looks that looks like it's supposed to be. Okay, so we're going to pop that one on there. So 
and just a little bit of glue just on the larger parts where there's some where there's some actual cardstock. Don't go too far down because as I said it's going to overlap a wee bit. And I've probably not taken that into consideration myself. Stuck to my finger and went for a ride. So as I say, that's why I said pop your sentiment slightly to the right hand side because we're going to pop that little tree overlapping the sentiment box slightly just like that to fit it in a little bit too much glue there got on my fingers and everywhere okay okay so at the same time we're going to bring in our other little trees so this one I actually before everything dries too much this big tall one I was going to I'd like to to sort of snug in behind a wee bit so, but his tail is so long, you may have to cut it off. Um, but anyway, I might be able to just force him just in and down there. Yeah, no, he's going to go okay. Yeah, he's a bit tall as well, so I may have to chop his uh, his little end off a bit. Just give him a bit of a, a bit of a haircut, or a, what do we call it, a trunk cut. And pop that down in there. And sort of just snug his leaves just behind the big tree a little bit. So just sort of like that. I'll bring it a bit closer so you can see. Just put um just snug put him snugly down in there. So I'm just going to pop some glue just just on the top. That's really the only bit that needs to be glued. See if I can do it again. Because I haven't put a huge amount of glue on that pink tree, it's sort of feeding in down there. Okay. Probably would have been a good thing to <clears throat> pop this one on first. But I didn't think ahead there, did I? Very well. I'm going to pop that there. And then just make sure his little trunk is tucked down behind there that's it yeah, that's better okay there we go so that sort of snugs in down there probably if you're doing your card after you finished watching the video I'd say pop that one on first but as you know I'm not much of a visual thinker and um, it wasn't until I saw it that I realized what I'd done there you go so he's all right and as I say because I haven't put a huge amount of glue on there he's sort of snuck down there okay Okay, so the shorter of the two trees, he doesn't have to worry about that too much. He's just going to sit on the front, um, just at the, the front of the, the big tree. And because he is on, in the front, you probably have to pop some glue on his trunk as well. So just a little bit up here and then a tiny bit just on his trunk so it doesn't flap about too much. Yeah, and because he's over the top of the pink tree, it doesn't hide him too much. You still see him against the mint macaron background, even though he's the same colour as the background. Oh, I've got glue on my fingers and things want to stick to me more than the background. Yeah. Okay, I'll just bring that closer and you can have a wee look. Here we are. So that's our little Christmas tree wood woodland area on the card there so while we've got that on I might pop the, um, the the rhinestones on you should have again three little rhinestones just pop those on your your favorite configuration whatever way you would like could be use one of them as a um, as a decoration on the top of that tree if you want to like a little star let's do that Yeah. Okay, so we've got our little, little glittery, glittery rhinestones there as well. Okay, so let's move to the inside of the card. So in the inside inside, like the bit that is going to glue, that bit there is going to glue to your card from the backing. So I'm going to pop, I've got a little panel of uh, white cardstock that's cut just the right size to fit in the centre there. I realise that I'm actually off to the left hand side a bit in my screen, apologies for that. So I'm just going to pop that on first and that's where you can um, write your personal message in there or stamp it with another Christmas sentiment or something like that. Just uh, stamp it with whatever images you like. 
just I'm going to leave this one blank. Okay, so where our Christmas gift where our gift card is actually going to go is on the bottom there, so that when they open it up, let's try that again. I open it up, see the message, and there's the gift card at the bottom. So you've got two pieces of cardstock here. You've got a slightly larger piece of mint macaron and a smaller piece of the polished pink, and they're sort of cut so that they fit together just like that. Okay, so that what we're going to do is just pop the embossed one, which is the pink one. So again, it's embossed with the snowflakes on there, like that. Now that little out, um, insert or that little um, little uh, out cut out there has been done with my tailored tags punch, which is one of my favourite punches. It's really really versatile. But basically, you just because it's got, it's obviously not the whole punch. Where is he? You just sort of punch half of the tailored tag and that gives you that beautiful sort of that cute little outset. And when you've got your gift card, which I don't seem to have my gift card here, it sort of slips down there and makes it easier to get it out uh, for your recipient. Okay, so that's going to, as I say, that's going to sit there. Now, so you can fit your gift card in that width. So you need your adhesive on the very edges of this, okay, because it is a tiny a bit of a tight squeeze. Um, so I'm going to use my skinniest double-sided tape. You could use your glue or something like that, but keep it really, really, really close to the edge and let it dry completely before you pop your gift card in. So as I say, I've got this skinny, skinny, skinny. I think it's only three mil, probably even less than that. Skinny, skinny um, double-sided tape. I'm going to run it close to the edge just like that and then I'm going to pop that on that lower panel there There we are. And as I say, that leaves a good a good space for your little gift card in there. I did have my gift card in here. Oh, here it is. So there's your, you might be your gift card and it just fits. It's a nice snug fit in there. Okay, so that's not going to be falling out anytime soon. But as I say, you don't have a lot of space. Um, so be careful with your glue. Okay, so that's that pretty much. Oh no, one more thing, one more thing. Now, the reason that I gave you a piece of cardstock with a hole cut in the middle of it is because we want to use this because it's such a it would be such a waste. We're going to pop that on there, and all that beautiful cardstock would be wasted and not seen behind um, behind the, um, the the gift card. So we've got we've got our front one decorated we've got this one here that doesn't have any decoration on it so it looks a bit plain there so what i've done now you can choose what you can do you can pop that piece of cardstock there as a complete um, just as a complete um, piece and then bring in this little other sentiment box that i've given you and put just a little little short you know christmas or for you or something like that on that one or, as I've done with this one, you can cut it in half. So cut the, the piece of cardstock in half and put it there with a gap in the middle. It sort of adds a little bit of interest. So I might not do that for this one because I've shown you this example how that one looks. But I'll put this one on whole and then you'll be able to choose which way you like it. You could even use the, the other side if you wanted to. Oh, we've got a delivery. I hope you can just leave it. He doesn't want me to sign for it or we're in trouble. Okay, so I'll just pop that on there. Oh, upside down. Upside down, Miss Jane. Turn it around the other way because the presents do have a up and a down direction. So I'll pop that on there. I think the delivery man just makes it, takes a picture and then moves on. So we've got this other little circle one. You could decide not to use that. It's just given it to you as another option for a sentiment. 
you've got the whimsy and wonder um, stamp set which is the one I've used for the front as well um, you can just pop that on there and again I'm going to use my uh, magenta madness so this one here is wishing you Christmas cheers and magical moments that last all year There we are. So it just fits, as I say, perfectly in that little serrated circle. So the circle is from the layered circle dies, one of the staples if you've got a craft dash at all. We sort of have a, a range of different size circles. Definitely um, a staple, definitely a go to. There we go. So I'm just going to leave that one just like that. As I say, you can choose, you can um, leave it in one piece or you can cut it. It's up to you. But there you go, I've given you examples for both. Okay, so that's our, our the, the, um, wish, the gift card part of our card done. We just bring in our, um, our original card base now. As I say, the very back of the gift card that you've created, um, the holder you've created, just pop some glue on it and then position it over the hole and you are pretty much done a lot of school kids going up the road past my house if you can hear them them talking and laughing I reckon they're headed to the local high school they tend to do days up there the primary school on one side of my house feeds to the the high school on the other side of my house so often the kids will go and have a day up there when they're in grade six and they're ready to transition to high school just to get them used to the environment which is good because it's a bit scary okay so there is our gift card holder with our whimsical whimsy and wonder um, collection there so hopefully you like that one. As I say, if you've done the Christmas, if you're doing my Christmas seasons one, you've got a, a Christmas version of that as well, or a, um, a sort of pine cone version of that as well, which is this one here. So the video of that, I'll be working on that next if you've purchased that class as well. Okay, so there is our second project. Okay, so there's your, my original and there's my new one, much the same. Cool, number two done. How are we going for time? 32 minutes. Yeah, normally about 40, 45 minutes for these, all in one. That one doesn't want to go in there. I don't want to ruin him. Just want to keep him safe. Let's pop him over there. Okay, so let's do some cleaning up and we will start our last one. And I love this design and I love the poinsettias. As I say, I've probably loved them to death this year or in the previous far, past couple of years. Um, it's just been you know, something that's just so easy to, to, to design around um, and I absolutely love it. So this is our corner fold easel card. So it's in um, soft saffron is the main colour. The paper that I've used is the Eden's Garden paper. It's our new collection that um, just came available to customers on the 2nd of November. It's actually from the, the um, stamp set and dies from the Eden's Garden are actually going to be in the next mini catalogue. So the, it's a bit of a preview, but the paper uh, and the embellishments that they use are a, sort of a while stocks last thing. So if you like those, that you have to probably get those before um, the end of the year to be sure that you get your your um, your supplies. Okay, so there obviously is our poinsettia. He's also a little bit unusually, a bit differently. He's actually in the soft succulent. Um, the leaves are in white, and I've got this this. Um, these leaves are my favourites as well. They're from the artistic dies, and I've just given you a couple. So when you cut the full die with with that that's in the gold, there you get four leaves on a sort of a sprig. But I've cut it down so that you've got uh, no, sorry, you probably get eight, and I've cut it down so that everyone's got uh, four each. So it's not the full sprig you've got in your pack, but like a, a half sprig. Okay, so let's get making that one. Those again, oh, I've got slightly sore back. My posture must be good. In your pack, be careful. Lots of little bits and pieces. 
lots of leaves and circles and flowers, embellishments. Okay, so you've got a card base. Now this is a four and a half inch card from memory, four and a half inch card. So it's a nine by four and a half, scored at four and a half. And then what you do for these is you, once you've determined your middle, which is going to be the middle of your card, sorry, I've gone up too far, um, you, you score from the bottom to the top corner. And that gives you the sort of pivot for the easel. And it sort of sits like that. So there we are. It looks a bit like that. So you can get a good look. So we're just going to decorate around this um, around this base. So we've got a panel of um, basic white that for the centre of your card. So I might just add that first. Just get it out of the way. I think it's four and an eighth um, square. It's not as, I, I like the being able to see the the, the pretty soft succulent colour um, inside when the card is opened because this is one that you actually see the inside of the card when it's on display. So it's nice to see a little bit more of that beautiful soft green colour. Okay, so that's the inside there. On the outside, you've got two triangles of the um, uh, Eden Garden paper. So you may have this one, which has got um, sort of finer flowers, but it still has the gold. You can see the gold, hopefully sort of embellishments or you may have the original um, that I showed you in the first um, card. Both just as nice but I just like to use all the, the possibilities in a in a packet of paper rather than wasting them. So they're just as nice, just different. So the pieces, obviously the pieces of the triangle fit into the triangle panels at the front of your card. So this is the top of my card. So just line them up. Again, you're going to see a fair bit of that beautiful soft succulent around the edge. So one half there. And one half there. So when you've got triangle points, try and take your glue, not too much glue, but try and take it right to the corners if you can, because otherwise they're going to lift up. Pop that one on as well. So I think this panel of designer series paper was four, yeah, four inches square. And then I've just cut it diagonally across there, but that fits in that little center there. So to try and minimize the waste of my cards, I try to fit as many sort of multiples of the card stock and everything in a single sheet. So obviously, designer series paper comes in 12 by 12 so the best round number to get as many out of a sheet is a 4 by 4 and that's what I've designed this card around. So, okay so we've got that there and that's sort of very pretty. Okay so what we're going to do now is decorate that. So you think about when your card is open, it's going to be open, it's going to open like that. So the, the, the decoration is glued onto this bottom half, this bottom diagonal half. You do not glue anything, if you can avoid it, don't glue anything to the top half because when the card is open, that's where it flips open. So if I'd glued any of these little elements to that back panel, they would be bent and they wouldn't flip up nicely like that, which is what we want. You want them to sort of hang in air like that. So just keep that in mind when you're popping your decorations together. So let's pop our flower together first. I've got so many elements here. This one took a bit of cutting to do, as you can probably imagine. Last time with our beautiful poinsettia, I usually sort of give it a slight curl between my finger, <clears throat> my finger, my thumb and my middle finger, just to give those flowers a, a wee bit of a natural look. Those leaves, I mean, petals. Just a slight one. No point going overboard because you're going to pop it in an envelope and probably flatten it again anyway. But just a little bit off flat, gives it a little bit more natural look. Um, so there, layer these up. And this one, made this flower so many times I could probably do it in my sleep. So I'm quite happy to retire it this year, assuming they don't bring it out in next year's catalogue. I can't imagine they would, not, not two years, three years in a row. It was such a popular set. I was so pleased when it came back. So we've got three layers of our poinsettia there. So we're just going to bring in one of the tiny little centre ones 
and just pop that straight in the center like that and obviously with the poinsettia if you haven't had one of my kits before just position your leaves so that they sort of don't line up exactly so they sort of at 90 degrees to the one behind them so there's our poinsettia it's lovely it really is nice I will miss it sort of um, when I don't use it again so again we're going to pop this onto our card and we're going to pop it so it's sort of central but slightly so the center of it is on the bottom bottom the the bottom um, panel so below the score mark if that makes sense so we're going to put glue the center of the cut of the flower just on the bottom of that um, below that score line and again as I say not onto the top one because then it won't fold properly or fold up so there I've got a tiny bit of glue in the back center and I'm just going to position that just below the score line sort of as central as you can um, top and bottom so that the distance from there to there and there to there are fundamentally the same and you just check yourself so that when I open it up you can see it's not glued to that top triangle it's just glued to the bottom okay so we can now bring in our other decorations around that so you've got two two sets of leaves you've got two large ones two two large holly leaves and two small holly leaves in white so there we are again I usually just give them a slight curl nothing too major and then we're going to just pop some glue just on the the bottoms of them and then slip them under our holly leaves and again be careful to stick only to the bottom triangle I'm going to put a big one and a little one on the top edge or top side or right hand side again slip them under and just glue them to the to the bottom yeah. now there's an example I put a bit too much glue and it got onto the top so I'm just going to wipe that off it got onto the top triangle there we are again the same one on the bottom just a little bit of glue there and slip it in under there because we've only got glue on the middle of our poinsettia you can pretty much bring them all the way in again I've got a little bit too much glue there just spot it off probably less to leave this open while the glue dries so you don't have any thing sticking where it's not supposed to last leaf just like that there we go there we go okay there we are testing that we haven't got too much glue on the back again okay so oh, excuse me I've got to stretch my back oh. so here you've got your four sprigs of gold um, the artistic dyes the lovely delicate flower so you've got four so you've either got the top four or the bottom four this one's got the top four so I'm going to just cut them into two if you've got the bottom four just pick two leaves and cut them separate I think there's a fairly easily um, defined you know where the where you can cut them but you're not going to worry too much about some having some raggedy edges because you're actually just going to slip them um, slip them behind as well with some glue on their tails and if you slip them far enough behind you won't see where you've cut them so I'm going to have those first two there just sort of coming in over the top and again they sort of add to the to the sort of floating or ethereal element of this one that sort of just sticks up there in the air so I'm going to bring that down there again not adding glue where they might stick to the top that's okay oops move that not as gentle as I should be yeah and then the second two I'm going to pop them down in here up there that's just a little bit a little bit um, plain there you may have to chop their ends off a wee bit just to get them to fit 
with some glue in the back and up there. Okay, so there, that's that decorated. And when it's open, it looks like that. You might decide to cut your leaves apart completely and put another one coming up here. That's entirely up to you. You do have to keep in mind that you've got to put your sentiment in as well. So we're going to put our sentiment in there. And so it sticks up, like it sits in there like that when it's closed. But when you open it up, it sort of flits up like that. You'll see that when we do it. Okay, so final thing, or not final thing, one more thing to do with our flower is to grab your gilded gem, a beautiful gilded gem, one of my go-tos this time of year, and just pop him straight in the centre of your poinsettia, just like that. Okay, so we might do the sentiment now, just finish the outside before we move to the front, to the inside. I've got my soft succulent ink here, and I'm going to use the Tis the Season from she says looking for it from the Christmas to remember our stamp set you just need a sentiment that is sort of skinny long and skinny ish but I really like this one because it's sort of like a reverse it's sort of like um, a negative of a normal stamp with the color on the outside and the sentiment itself in white okay so your panel is quite long the one I've given you I've just given you a longer one just in case you need the extra length so just um, pick an end, it doesn't really matter too much. So we want enough blank to fit in behind, I should probably bring that, enough blanks to bring it in here behind and um, glue it. So don't go too hard up one end because we can always trim it down. So I'm going to pop it sort of like, almost like central on the, on the, um, on the, um, on the, on the, on the little rectangle, on a little slip, a little bit off center down if you want so let's sort of work out how we're going to do this so it's going to sit in behind the leaves so I'm going to have to trim it a tiny bit but you don't want it going too far off the edge there so we want to trim that down so first thing I'm going to do is trim the end take off that excess cardstock there okay so that's all right and I think I've just about timed it right because I think if I pop that in there, why aren't you going in? Okay, that's as far as it's going to go. But I think that's good. I think that's as far as I want it to go because any further, my my sentiment would disappear behind my my leaves. So I'm happy with that. It's not overlapping the edge of the card too much, and I can see my sentiment behind my leaves. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back of that end, just that tiny little end decide to stop and pop that in there okay a little bit too much glue which I'll have to get rid of so I went, I went too far with my glue as I say we don't want too much there because it'll glue it where it's not supposed to glue but that's that's good okay so there we are, that's our sentiment done. As I say, when it's closed, I'll pop that into the wrong spot. I'm gonna have to move it quickly before the glue dries. Hmm. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong is the question. Okay, that's better. Okay, sorry, just it was it had moved, I'd gone the wrong. Ah, the glue stuck. Okay, so there we are. I'm happy with that. Yeah. So when it's open, it just rests there like just a normal sentiment, and when it's open, it sort of flips up in the air like that, which is really, really nice. I think like a little gift tag or something. Okay, so every easel card needs a foot. And so that's what we've got the little circles for and the extra little flower. What we're going to do is just glue the white circle. No sentiment on this one. And I haven't put a sentiment inside either. So that's entirely up to you. If you've got a sentiment that you would think would fit on this central part, go for it by all means. Um, so I'm just going to pop that white circle onto the serrated circle. 
Then I'm going to pop the pop the little flower just on the centre of that. So he fits pretty perfectly just there, like he was made for it. Okay. So then you decide how high, as with all these, um, with all um, easel cards, you work out how high you want your card to sit. I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals on the back. Obviously, this one has to be a little bit higher because it's going to act as your foot, so it's going to stop your card from flopping forwards. So work out how high you want the card to sit when it's on display, and then you just pop your little foot just where you want it to stop it from falling forwards. And there it'll act as a sort of a footrest for your easel. There we go. So that one's worked out really well. So that's how it sits when it um, is on, the, on, on display. But as I say, if you wanted to add another sentiment, I'd probably add it in that top right-hand corner so it doesn't sort of ruin the clean lines when the card's on. Well, not ruin, but, you know, doesn't distract from the, the, cool, the clean lines of the card itself when it's on display. If you wanted somewhere to write on that didn't, you weren't happy with writing on that area, I would just pop a little white panel on the back and actually write your message on that or put your extra sentiment on that if you wanted to leave that front surface nice and clean. Um, but it's entirely up to you. You might like your writing. I, I hate my writing, so I sort of hide it wherever I can. Okay, so that is card number three. That worked out really well. I'm happy with that one. So here's the original here. And there's the one we've just made together today. So, okay. And I, I like that paper just as much as the original paper. So if you've scored the, the, the finer paper, then um, it should be just as lovely. Okay, so that's card number three. I hope you liked that one. And that's all, all we've got for this month. How far did we go? 51 minutes. That's not too bad. So three cards in 51 minutes. So we'll see how you go with that. So there we are. That's our three cards. We've got our um, corner easel, our gift card, and our little calendar all there for, um, for ready for your Christmas and New Year giving. Okay, so thanks very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you um, have a, a lovely Christmas if I don't speak to you all beforehand. Uh, remember, November is our start with savings month. So if you got to um, a wish list that you'd like to stop up, stock up for Christmas, the start with savings bundle um, joining offer would be ideal. As I say, there's no um, obligation to do classes or sell to anyone or do anything, do videos or anything like that. You can just be a hobby hobbyist and spend as much or as little as you want um, and you basically will get a discount for however long, a 20% discount for however long you stay an active demonstrator. But anyway, no more advertising for this one. Thanks very much and um, I will see you all next time.